Discs are spacers in between the bones of the spine. If we didn't have them, we'd be one block of bone and we wouldn't be able to move. There are two parts to a disc. In the middle is a gel type fluid. Surrounding that gel are layers and layers and layers of dense, tough collagen fibers. Uh, think of the same stuff that makes up tendons and ligaments. It is the unraveling of that outside layer of fibers that is ultimately responsible for disc damage, which can lead to disc bulges. Think of fibers of a rope. When they are dense and tightly wound, they are tough. When those rope fibers slowly start to unravel, it's not as strong, it's not as tough, and it's not as durable. And in the case of the disc, as it starts to unravel those collagen fibers, that's where that inside gel fluid can slowly creep and uh, weave its way through that and lead to disc bulges. So that is what disc damage is. Now, let's find out what causes that to happen. When I graduated chiropractic college, my dad says to me, son, what does a chiropractor do anyway? And I said, dad, do you remember all of those years of back pain that you had and you wanted me to walk on your back, kind of bounce and jump around? Well, I kind of do that professionally now. I became a chiropractor in part because I wanted to learn how to manage my own back pains. Now, the point of this story is I had back pain, my dad had back pain, and the research shows that genetics is a very large part of disc damage. Although we can't do anything about our genetics, the rest of the things that I'm going to tell you about, you can control. Number one is diet. It's been known for a long time that smoking is horrible for all tissues of the body and discs are included in that. But now it's starting to become realized that nutrition plays a part. Uh, what are the good foods that you can eat for discs? Eh, it's the same foods that you would consider healthy eating for just about anything else. More whole foods, less refined foods. What's a refined food? Anything that comes in a, most foods that come in a box, a bag, or a can, especially staying away from sugars. Uh, you want healthy fats, you want lean meats, and you want whole foods. Think Mediterranean type diet or look up the anti-inflammatory diet. Number two, adequate sleep. Uh, we need rest for recovery. Rest is essential for recovery, and if we don't get good sleep, we're not gonna get good recovery of the tissues, also, when we're chronically fatigued, we're tired, we're not getting adequate rest, there is more of an uh, immune system response, there is more of an inflammatory response because of that, and it is the inflammation that sometimes really causes a little bit more uh, disc pain in those areas where that damage is occurring. Number three, it's hydration. If we're dehydrated, our tissues just don't do as well. This is especially true for collagen fibers. Our body is mostly water, so we wanna have adequate water intake, keep our tissues hydrated to keep them strong and healthy. Number four is how we move. If we're constantly bending through the spine, it's the repetitive nature of bending in the spine over and over again that will slowly cause those discs, that outside layer, to unwind or unravel, as we said. So instead of bending through our spines, we want to move through our hips, if you wanna learn more about this, watch the video above, and it is how to perform a proper hip hinge. And finally, lack of movement. So I, I said rest, we need rest for recovery, but we need stress. Stress plus rest equals growth. If we don't stress tissues, they are not going to become as strong or resilient. So uh, in the case of tendinosis, tendon problems, think your golfers and tennis elbows and things like that, but it could be anywhere, what they're finding is you really want to stress it. You want to take weights, resistance, and do exercises to make that tendon stronger. In the case of the disc, there are certain exercises that you would want to do. You want to load it every once in a while to make it stronger. So stress plus rest equals growth. The key to this is, is if you're having a disc injury in the moment, you just need a professional to help guide you. And I wish I could tell you right now, here's the exercises you should or should not do but it's not that simple. It's usually based on um, some exams, some screens to see how you're moving, uh, and, and then to see how do you tolerate certain exercises. So it's very individualized, but the key is you should not be scared of movement and scared to exercise because ultimately you want to exercise and make those tissues stronger. So those are the influences on disc damage. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, Give me the thumbs up. Encourage me to make more videos. You can like our page. 
Um, and then always, I like uh, questions and comments. Leave those below and I would be more than happy to answer your questions or your comments.